Welcome, welcome all to another episode of your favorite podcast. I'm Redbeard. This is Targo. How the hell are you doing, man? Doing good, my friend. Love the new Arsenal jersey. I know. Rice, rice, baby. Does it got rice on the back or is it just a... It's just a blank. Just a yeah. blank. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I stopped getting names on jerseys a long time ago because, you know, the last time I got it, they sold on re and then I got a Fabregas one and they sold Fabregas. So I just stopped. <laughs> so they always, they always sell the players when you buy their Jersey, huh? Is that how it goes? Yeah. Yep. And I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that at all. I think it'd probably be different, but it's big, big week for us Arsenal fans, but to celebrate, what are you drinking, buddy? Drinking my go-to, man. It's hot. It's a hundred degrees here, Fahrenheit. Same here. Um, so I'm drinking a summer shandy, man. Line and Kugels. There you go. Tasty Whatever it is, it better lemonade be ice cold. beer. <laughs> <laughs> Very refreshing, though. It is. It is. Uh, I'm drinking the Voodoo, Ra- Voodoo Ranger Juice Force IPA. I know you've had it before. I have. I have not. I think they're so. pretty strong, if I'm not mistaken. Um, nine point five percent. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be feeling good. I need a little bit, you know, to help jog my memory. If <laughs> we are for this episode, we are going back in time, man. We are Getting in the we time are. machine. But yeah, that's good. It, it's very fruity. It is. Yeah. <clears throat> the juice. It's very <laughs> forward on the juice. It's very forward on the juice. <laughs> uh, but those are our brews. Let's get to some banter. Welcome to brews and banter. Today, we're going back in time, as Targo said. Games that live rent-free in our minds give us either dreams, good ones, or nightmares. Uh, As well as, you know, it is transfer season, transfer rumors, and news, because there is a lot of it. So, make sure to check out our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube all of our socials, uh, links below, as well as check out our Redbubble. Check out our merch. Links Get are that bruise and banter swag below. going. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so into some news and transfers because there's a lot. A lot has been happening since the start of the transfer window. Uh, and to start it off, uh, we got some uh, financial fair play breaches by Manchester United and Barcelona. Uh, they've been hit with fines by UEFA. United's were 300,000 euros for a minor break in break even deficits. Whatever like that a, means. I'm no accountant. Yeah. Feels like a slap on the wrist for how much money these clubs make. And then yep. Barcelona were hit with 500,000 euros for wrongly reporting in the financial year of 2002 profits on disposable of intangible assets, which are not relevant income under the regulations. So essentially they reported something that didn't actually count towards FIFA fair play. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) we look at those amounts, man. That's what their players, a player's wages for a week or two. For Barcelona. Yeah. hundred percent. And then yeah, 300,000 for, that's you know less than Bruno Fernandez's wages, so <laughs> for so one yeah, week. not not a whole lot of, I guess, d- real a discipline. Little, a little slap on the wrist. I wouldn't even call it a slap on the wrist, man. It's a little a little boop on the nose is all yeah. that is for them. <laughs> this tisk. All right, and then we got Kang and Lee and Lucas Hernandez have officially been announced as PSG players, joining from Mallorca and Bayern Munich, respectively. Good signings. Yeah. Lucas Fernandez, I mean, we'll see if he can stay healthy. He's been injured for, it was like the past six months. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the PSG Ultras saying, we won't forget that you uh, are born and raised in Marseille and you'll never be accepted at this club? Dude, I'm, I'm just not a fan of PSG Ultras in I'm general. I'm not a fan of PSG fans. Let's be honest. They are, I mean, they booed Messi and he didn't do anything wrong. Listen to that. They booed Messi, and he probably won them that league on title. Yeah. Him and Mbappe. So and we'll see what happens with the latter. But <laughs> Yeah, watch Mbappe's about to leave too, man. Right. PSG uh, don't want um, him. Yeah, right. <laughs> they don't want yeah. Well, they want him to sign a contract. Right. He he doesn't he's want not going to sign it. 
and they don't want to lose them for free. So yep, that's the big thing. Willing to put up the most money over 150 million. There's only like three teams that have that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. And then you're three talking teams. Anymore. One of them's PSG. <laughs> yeah. The other one's Real Madrid and probably Manchester City. And then we're talking wages after that. It's probably a financial package upwards of 250 million. And I don't know if anyone can get away with that. In no, man. Fair play. Unless it's not like at an all your contract, Chelsea. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> they're trying all to get, right. a, they're trying to get away with that. Did you see that? They Premier are. Premier League's trying to implement something that only, they only do five years as the max. Yeah. Uh, I think that they did implement it. And I think it's as far as how f- the transfer fee can be only spread over five years, but they can sign eight year contracts, whatever. I don't think they can. Really? I'm going to have to double check on that. Okay. Uh, well, speaking of Chelsea, they are linked with Paulo Dybala, whose uh, release clause is rumored to be about 12 million pounds. I feel that's like that's pretty cheap. That's very cheap for a player of his caliber. I don't know how he would do in the Premier League. He's tiny. Know, basically lived in Syria. Uh. Yeah, I feel like he would do well in like Spain or France, but I primarily, I, I don't know. It doesn't really fit his style of play either. But that's never deterred Chelsea from buying someone. So I don't think that one goes goes anywhere. <laughs> I, I don't either. Uh, Bayern Munich are apparently lining up a third bid for Harry Kane. This one rumored to be around 100 million euros. Spurs, to counteract that, have offered Kane a reported 400,000 pounds a week. Uh, but he's reported to be keen on a move to Bayern Munich. If you're Harry Kane, what do you do? Go to Bayern Munich. I, I mean, I knew the answer before I asked the question, but you got to ask it anyway. So and it's a perfect signing for Bayern Munich, man. They've been yeah. calling out for that striker. Harry Kane's the perfect striker for him. He is, and it just makes sense. Kind of like the links between him and Manchester United. Both teams need a striker. It just makes sense. If I'm Harry Kane and you don't want to go to another Premier League club just out of respect to Tottenham, Bayern Munich sounds like the perfect fit to me. Even to Daniel Levy, he's not selling to a you know, direct rival. Yeah, exactly. Going off to the Bundesliga, but it's all gonna I think it's gonna come down to Daniel Levy and maybe Harry Kane. I know I've seen some stuff come out. Harry Kane's willing to go to Bayern Munich, he wants the move, but he hasn't really said anything publicly. Yeah, I think he's so respects- I think once because I mean, he, he could he could he could say yes, I want to stay at Tottenham, and then that'll squash that. Or he could say no, I want to leave, and then I think Daniel Levy will be forced to leave. Or if he doesn't sign another contract, he goes for free next year, which yeah. obviously he won't want. Levy, that is exactly. I know I saw something. It was Gareth Bale left Tottenham, won twenty two trophies, and retired. And if he had stayed at Tottenham, he would have won zero trophies. So. Well, I think I saw also like his one trophy list season was when he went back to Tottenham on loan. Yes, 100%. <laughs> so uh, if I'm Harry Kane, I'm like, eh, never going to win a trophy here. So I might as well move because it's going to I mean, be he's done perfect. all he can for that club. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. And then some. Speaking of Manchester United, they have replaced David De Gea with Andre Onana for a reported 55 million euros from Inter. Inter are looking at Jan Sommer of Bayern Munich and Shakhtar's Anatoly Trubin as replacements. Well, I don't think the Onana one's official yet. I know they're in talks that, and they've had some bids. At the time of this recording this morning, uh, Fabrizio Romano gave it the, here we go. So so not quite official, but it looks like it will happen. He says very seriously. <laughs> because he's like Santa Claus when it comes to transfer delivering players from one team to another. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Christian Pulisic has officially joined AC Milan from Chelsea. Good move for him. Potentially if he can perform, <laughs> that's going to be the big question. You know, he started yeah. out at Chelsea real well and then kind of fell off injuries, whatnot. Never really took his chances, I would say. We'll see what he can do with Milan. You know, maybe not quite big a spotlight on him as at Chelsea. 
Oh. Yeah. I, th- I think the style of play of the Serie A might fit him a little bit better, too. Um, players seem to be a little less injury prone in Serie A. So hopefully it's a good move for him and he stays healthy longer so that way he can actually get the chance he deserves. I mean, he's one heck of a player, I will say that, when he's healthy. I would say he's had the, a chance he deserves. He just didn't take it. <laughs> I don't know Fair. if I'm being hypercritical of him, but... I mean, the way he plays for the U.S., that's not how he plays for Chelsea. No, no. I, I <laughs> so mean, I think I have the right to be critical. Yeah, I would say so. Especially if you're a Chelsea fan. Yeah. All right. To some surprising news. Uh, one Lazio midfielder, Sergei Malinkovic Savage, has signed for Al Halal for a reported fee of 40 million euros. Joins Ruben Neves and Kalidou Kulbali. Uh, I felt like this came out of nowhere, and a player of his caliber. Stupid kind of man! Why would he do that? Just destroy his career? I don't know. I mean, he's what twenty eight, twenty nine. Like he's, he's got in his one, prime right now. I mean, one come on. Big contract left before going over there. Forty million euros. I'm sure there's plenty of teams in Europe that would have been willing to pay that price for him. That's wild. I mean, that's a yeah. that's a steal for that Saudi Arabian league, who we obviously they are scooping up a whole bunch of players. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, Al Rian have signed Rodrigo from Leeds as well. So they're just scooping up players left and right. Uh, that won't be the end of uh, our announcements for for Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Ashley Young will, has joined Everton on a short-term deal after his contract expired at Aston Villa. I can't believe he's still playing. Juventus are set to be banned from Europe for any competitions next season as their punishment for breaking FFP rules on certain transfers, just adding on to their 10-point deduction. Yeah, I heard that's not official yet. I know they're, t- yet. they're talking yeah. about it maybe doing that so then they don't get a points deduction yeah and i mean they're in the conference league anyways so if i'm them it might as well it's better than getting a point deduction and possibly not making the champions league next season so uh paul pogba has been offered a hundred million a year contract to join al ali to join edward mundy and bobby firmino and they've also put in a bid for napoli midfielder Peter Zelinsky. I've seen that. Yeah. So the Pogba one, I could probably see that. I mean, the guy's career has makes sense. Not done well. But on the other hand, like maybe if you're maybe a lower league team in the Premier League, do you take a chance on Pogba and that injury record? I don't know. I, I saw an interesting take on Talk Sport the other day, and it was Manchester United should sign Paul Pogba on like minimal wages. So then you have like a super sub coming off the bench if he's healthy, but it's very low risk, high reward as a signing. I saw when uh, Chelsea should get yeah. Pogba. If you can get him for minimal and like pay as you play sort of deal, <laughs> then it makes sense. But other than that, if I'm Pogba, I'm going straight to Saudi Arabia. I'm taking my paycheck. Retiring with in two years. Record. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 200 Peter's- million. Sounds yeah. richer. Peter Zelensky, I, I don't think should go because how old is he? Maybe late twenties. Yeah, yeah. So I could, I would prefer if he, you know, obviously stayed at Napoli, Napoli yeah. and what they did there. But I know he's been there a, a while, so I, I could understand too if he wanted to get a big payday. I mean, a lot of these players. I mean, your your life in football professionally is very short. In the grand scheme of things, getting as a one player, yeah, giant paid tech. I kind of don't blame them, but at the same time, you want the competition as well. So, well, let me ask you a question. So, is Saudi Arabia buying all these players, paying them, ex- you know, exorbitant amount of money? How long does that last? I mean, if it, if they have what is rumored to be like infinite amounts of money, then I would say a while, but at the same time, it's like you're just throwing like throwing away money at this point. 
I mean, what's a while? Five years, 10 years, 20 years. It's, it's not going to be profitable in the next 10, 15, maybe even 20 years with the amount of money they're throwing at players. So I, I don't know. I know I saw one here recently. It was there. I don't know if you have it on our list about Jordan Henderson. Yeah, I do. It's actually in, well, we'll get to it here in a second. So I'll okay. make a quick, quick. Well, let's just talk about it now. So Jordan Henderson, yeah. where's he, where are they? He wants Al to go. Al Etifak. Al Etifak. Okay. With Steven Gerrard, who's the coach. But they were offering him like what? 700,000 a week. Mm hmm. <laughs> that, that's ridiculous, man. Yeah. I mean, I, Kevin I, De Bruyne at Man City is making 500000 I think, a week. And he's the highest paid player in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, that's crazy money. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, they're, same thing with, they put in a bid for Fabinho, Musa Dembele, and Thiago as well, all with around the same wages. I'm just like, if you're a player, it's hard to turn down. I mean, that's generational money but at the same time if you're liverpool do you do you let for example fabinho go because i mean he's what 29 yeah i, so I mean it, are it his depends. legs gone i mean he didn't obviously perform well last season but the fabinho of a couple years ago was phenomenal yeah exactly. one of the best midfielders I, there in the world for me, it, it's more along the lines of how far does jurgen klopp want to take this midfield rebuild and then how much money is the Saudi Arabian teams offering for these players. I mean, Jordan Henderson, you probably get a max of like 10 mil for him, but Fabinho you'd probably get, I mean, if they come in with a bit of 40, 50 mil, I'm well, that's sure what they are. They're coming, I think there. with 40. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you get a player of Fabinho's quality? I know they're linked with Romeo Labia. Is he that quality? Is he that proven yet? I don't know. So, I, I would say if I'm Liverpool, I'd probably try to keep one of them. Well, I think if they're willing to entertain the offer, then there might be something, you know, Fabinho obviously might then be going a little downhill there. Yeah, it's very possible. I mean, after last season, you never know. And you say the same about Virgil van Dyke, but you've said that many times. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Speaking of players getting bids, Alexander Mitrovic has uh, had a bid for him made by Al Halal as well. So apparently he's turned that one down because he wants to stay in Europe, but they're just bidding for what seems like every single player out there. Pretty much testing the waters to see who they can get. Yeah. Honestly, I think Mitrovic could be a good fit at Manchester United. Right. They're looking for a nine that won't cost a lot of money. There's, there's one one right there and we know he knows how to score lots of goals so that's right uh al nasir have been banned from registering pl new players by fifa because they still haven't paid leicester city for on an outstanding debt on bonuses from a 2018 sale of nigeria forward ahmed musa you would think with all of this money they would be able to pay a team the bonuses that they agreed to i'm sure that'll get wrapped up here real quick oh, oh yeah oh yeah like it's not i, I remember all. seeing the amount it wasn't a whole lot like not by the time we release this video i'm sure it will have actually happened <laughs> yeah it wasn't you know millions of no it was like euros couple, pounds couple whatever it was thousand yeah yeah that was it. chump change to them <sighs> for real especially with them out there offering these players it's insane uh, Chelsea are still actively looking for suitors for three players. Hakeem Ziyech, who failed his medical at Al Nasir. That's why Romelu, Romelu Lukaku, uh, who had a bid from Inter accepted, and then he just didn't talk to them. So they pulled out because he's. I, well, why I heard Chelsea rejected the bid. Fabrizio Romano says they accepted the second or third bid from Inter, and then because. Romelu Lukaku is in talks with Juventus. Inter pulled out. Well, so I know you the was whole situation interested. is bananas. Yeah, I, know, I heard Juve was parents. interested, but I, I I thought Chelsea had rejected Inter Milan's bid. The first one, yes. And now yeah. Juve have come sniffing around, and then, which which is funny because Romelu Lukaku did an interview where he said he would never join Juve or Milan. 
Yeah, I don't know. Who knows where he ends up, man? I, honestly, it's I'm tired of this Lukaku saga. Just go, go somewhere Arabia and, Arabia and go away. Uh, honestly, of, tip of Saudi into Arabia. mediocrity. <laughs> go back to mediocrity, man. I, I don't think we'll see heights of Lukaku again. I think he's no. done. He's yeah. he's washed over the hill. I think so too, which is a shame because he's still in his twenties. So I don't know. Uh, speaking of players that I wish would just go away, uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea are hoping to offload him to Saudi Arabia because nobody wants his wages. Um, yeah. I hope they're stuck with him for another year. That, that would be funny, uh, but <laughs> I just hope he goes away. I, I'm tired of his antics. Uh, Chelsea are lining up a bid for 19-year-old Lyon wonder kid Ryan Chir- Cherky. Uh, to replace Turkey, yeah. Pulisic. Pulisic. Uh, I mean, I've seen him play. He looks good, but I, as again, it's he's raw talent like Mudrik. So do they need another winger? I don't think so. But I don't think so either. The Maduake, players they're selling. Who knows? Maduake, Raheem Sterling, Mudrik. I don't know who else plays out there on the right. Ziyech. Ziyech. They, they still haven't expect. been able to upload. Yeah, they got a lot. A I'd lot like to see players. him, I think, stay and develop for at least another year before making a move to a big club. Yeah, I agree. Aston Villa have had a 45 million euro offer rejected by Bayer Leverkusen for Musa Diaby. That one was kind of out of nowhere. Uh, Leverkusen looking for more around 60. Ambitious, man. Ambitious yeah. by Villa. I know. Holy That'd cow. That'd be one heck of a signing if they could get it. Yeah, right after uh, beating everyone out to Pau Torres, which is a great signing for them. Uh, Spurs will not buy defender Clément Langley from Barca. Uh, 15 mil apparently is too much for him. <laughs> That's wild. I mean, I, I didn't, he didn't impress. So, I mean, no. I guess. I, he, hasn't, he didn't impress for Barcelona when he played for him. He didn't impress for Tottenham, so. I wonder if Posta Koglu had something to say about about that. Probably, probably. Uh, Luton Town have been forced to suspend their first home game due to concerns over the construction work on the remodel of Kenilworth Road, smallest stadium in the Premier League. I mean, you kind of expected it at this point because they got to do a 10 million pound remodel just to have it up to Premier League standards. And they didn't have very long to get get it there. Mm-hmm. Another surprising, well, two surprising ones. First one, Dusan Tadic and Ajax have mutually terminated his contract after because of, reportedly, uh, he thinks there's a lack of talent in their first team. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. It was just interesting because he's been there for so long. Yeah, he has been there for, what, past four something years i he was the last player to play in the game against tottenham the champions league semi-final that was at the what year was that that was great question 2019 no i think that was I'm trying to remember, were fans in the stadiums? <laughs> Anyways, he was the last one. So, uh, next surprising one: Newcastle have reportedly tabled a 82 million euro bid for Cavardona. I doubt that one's real. Rumor I'm just going with transfer rumors, man. Rumor, nothing more. It would be very ambitious of them, though, if they did. Uh, one that's not a rumor, Javi Simons has completed his move back to PSG after they activated his $6 million buyback clause. At the time Simons or Simmons? Simons. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. What a uh, master class that is of transfer business. Holy cow. That That's a great signing, young kid. We'll see if he gets any time, though, at PSG is, is the... It'll all depend if uh, Mbappe or Neymar is out the door. 
And then, uh, last but not least, to nobody's surprise but his, uh, Harry Maguire stripped of the Manchester United captaincy. Uh, he posted on his Twitter saying that he respects Ten Hag's decision but doesn't agree with it. It's basically them trying to get him out the door, man. Right? You're not a part of our plans. Why would you be our captain? I I don't know. And also, I just sit here and imagine what his face looked like while Ten Hag is telling him this. Just... <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah i mean i we've kind of known he's surplus requirements there at united here yeah for what seems like a couple of years but reluctantly they had to play him because of lack of depth well yeah when you lose sandro martinez lissandro martinez and then rafael Varane get injured there's there's two starters yeah so what do you guys think any of these sound too good to be true? What do you think of the uh, all the players going to Saudi Arabia? Kavar Dunn definitely... is too good to be true. That's for sure. Going to Newcastle. Definitely blowing my mind that all these players are actually agreeing to it. Going to Saudi Arabia? I know. That's wild. It's nuts. Like I was, the Ruben Neves one was very surprising to me. Yeah. Especially for $55 million. Like He was rumored to go for 80 what, two years ago? think so yeah when united were looking at him yeah and arsenal and psg and barcelona anyways so targo let's take a trip down memory lane rack our brains to those things of dreams and nightmares (laughs) games that live rent free in our heads I tried to be as unbiased as I could with this because there's a lot of Arsenal games that live rent free in my head, but they keep me up at night because they are nightmares. So, yeah, I, I agree. Well, I, I have one uh, one that was a dream and one that's a nightmare <laughs> for me. So I, I, that, have, I that I have on I have this list. a nightmare, uh, but it's also a very controversial one. So Targo, what is the first game that comes to mind when you think of games living rent free in your head. So this one, I I remember it, man. I remember the day. I remember where I was. I remember what I ate for breakfast. I remember it all, man. (laughs) I'm sure you remember this game too. All too well. It was Manchester United versus Arsenal. October 24th, 2004. 2005 season man in the Premier League this was the invincible run came to an end <sighs> this game had so much controversy not only in it but after it it was just nuts this is the game dubbed Pizzagate <laughs> after Sir Alex Ferguson was hit by a piece of pizza in the tunnel after the game <laughs> and it we wouldn't find out Who threw this pizza or what happened until 2017? Yeah. What is that? 12 years later? (laughs) Yeah. Cesc Fabregas finally owned up to throwing the pizza at Sir Alex Ferguson. Imagine being on live television in 2017 when he admits it. I know. (laughs) Just Sir Alex Ferguson sitting at home. I knew it. Yeah, a 16 year old says Fabregas throwing a piece of pizza at one of the greatest managers of all time. <laughs> <laughs> the oh disrespect. That sounds like something a 16 year old would do. <laughs> it does. Food fights in the tunnel. Oh my but, goodness. Uh, yeah, this game ended 1 0, or not 1 0, 2 0. 2 0. To Manchester United. Like I said, it ended the 49 game. The unbeaten streak, so it ended at 49. That would have been 50. What a sweet one that would have been for Arsenal. Number 50 at Old Trafford. Mm-hmm. Wasn't meant to be. So I'll start, man. The first goal came. It was a penalty. Wayne Rooney basically diving over Sol Campbell's leg. Dude, it wasn't even close. It was like it was this not much close. room between his foot and okay, Sol that's, Campbell. That's an exaggeration, but there, he didn't touch him. And didn't Wayne touch him Rooney all. goes over. Penalty. VAR existed back then. <laughs> right. Penalty. I forget who scores it. I think, oh, Vandy Stroy scores it. 
Yeah. I got to say redemption from him, though, from the previous season where he missed a PK and then got pretty much abused by the Arsenal players. <laughs> <laughs> Beaten and just everybody all jumped on him and celebrated yeah. in his face. Yeah. yeah. So he yeah. got a little revenge on that one. But man, that this was a wild game. Like there was, I don't know if you remember, there was a point where Freddie Umberg kind of got put through on goal. Rio Ferdinand comes basically shoulders him off the ball, but like a hard shoulder, like more of a just rams right into him, knocks him off. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Not no foul. Fight. Yeah. Should have been a red card for last Should have been a red back. card, probably. I mean, it was a blatant foul. I mean, I don't know how you yeah. can just run into another player. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Gary Neville had some questionable tackles on Jose Antonio Reyes. Rest in peace. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, that game was just dirty. It's it's an era of the Premier League that I miss, quite honestly. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, there were so many nasty tackles in that game. Especially I'm not even from, done. <laughs> Rude I Van know, Roy, from United. Yeah, Rude Van Nistelrooy had one on Ashley Cole, man. Studs up, just right, rakes his shin right down. I still Not- I still see replays of that to this day, and I get shivers down my that spine. That had to have hurt so bad. Yes. And oh, it kind of went both back- ways. Ashley Cole definitely had some tackles that were uh, <laughs> Ashley Cole S because he was so quick, man. He'd go flying into him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you can see him coming from 15, 20 yards away. Too. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. But then Arsenal, they were pushing for goals, man. Thierry Henry wasn't on his best form. There there was a shout for a PK from them that wasn't given. But United got the second. Wayne Rooney, man. On his 19th birthday. <laughs> yeah. Scores in second half stoppage time. I will tell you, teenage Wayne Rooney was something else. Let me tell you. Whew. Yeah. But I remember that game, like I said, I... Just finished up breakfast because I had a soccer game that day as well. <laughs> and yeah, I remember yeah, I was all I, dressed up in myself, get you know, waiting to leave, waiting for the end of that game. And it was just, <laughs> yeah, ended in I misery. Re- I remember watching that game too. I was throwing stuff at the TV, yelling. I had already eaten breakfast and I had all my stuff on. I had a game that morning too. And man, I was, I was so mad. I got yelled at by my parents because I was throwing so much stuff at the TV. They thought I was going to break it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that is the first game of mine that lives rent free in my head. How about you? Which What's one of yours? I'll be honest with you. This might surprise you a little bit because it kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, 2014 World Cup semifinals. You thinking, yeah, this would be a close game. Germany, Brazil, heavyweights. In Brazil? No. In Brazil. World yeah, Cup was in Brazil nation. that year. They were favorites to win this one, and it ended 7-1. to one. Germany just rolling over Brazil. And it still lives rent-free in my head, mostly because uh, they scored four goals in like seven minutes. In the first half, yeah. In the yeah. first half, including Miroslav Klose with two and 69 seconds and two and three minutes by Tony Kroos. Like, it was over before they even had a chance to get into the game. I, it just, so many goals. I mean, on was it Andre Shirla with the absolute banger? Oh, yeah, he had a golazo in the second half, like, to make it six or seven, whatever it was. Yeah. and because Germany felt pity on Brazil, they allowed a goal in the 90th minute. That's awesome. Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> but I just, I mostly, I don't remember... I mean, I remember the game itself, but what sticks out to me the most is the reaction in Brazil afterwards. Oh, dude, do you remember mayhem like they would cut sports. to scenes of the fans? And the fans were just mayhem. bawling, man, yeah. crying. Riding in the streets. Ah, oh, man. And that wasn't that the year that Goza That's where they beat the Argentina, the yeah. Yeah, against the Netherlands. No, so, it was against Messi, Argentina. Oh, Messi. That was it. In the final. That was it. I'm thinking Spain and Netherlands. Thank you. But yeah, it is just absolute chaos in Brazil afterwards. And that's really what sticks out to me the most. So I know in that game, Neymar didn't play. I think yeah. they played Cameroon, and that's where he got the elbowed mm-hmm. from Alex Song. 
You think if Neymar played in that game, it makes a difference? I mean, probably. Let's be honest. With how much better they played when he was on the field. I, I don't think they win that game because of how def- how in shambles they were defensively. Tabby uh, Louise, Dante, yeah. Mike Con, and... Sideshow Bob, one, two, and three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then that Germany team. Stacked. Stacked. Ozil, like you mentioned, Cruz, Mirosav Kloza, Thomas Muller, Philip Lahm, Sebastian Feinsteiger. Boateng, Manuel Neuer, Hummels, and Boateng. then on the bench, you got guys like Andre Schurla, Lucas Podolski, Julian Draxler, Mar- Mario Goza, Christoph Kramer. If you remember him at all, I do. Defensive midfielder. Yeah. So, I mean, on paper, I think Brazil probably should have been beat, but. Yeah. I remember the jerseys too. Those were, those were slick German jerseys, the black and red. The black and red stripes. Yes. Yep. One of the best they've had in a long time. And then you got the traditional Brazilian yellow with green accents. The one right behind you. Not quite. That one's similar. A year before that, or World Cup before that. But They were missing a number nine in that World Cup. That's for yeah, sure. Definitely, because Fred got booed off the field <laughs> in that game. Okay, Targo, what do you got for me next? Well, I'll I'll stick by Brazil as well. Okay. In a World Cup where they also <laughs> lost. <laughs> oh, boy. Because <laughs> Brazil losing just in the World Cup is an uncommon thing. It really is, though. I'm rolling back the clock, though, back to 1998. Ooh. When Brazil played Norway in the 98 group World stage. Cup in a group stage game. And so... The actual game, I will say, doesn't stick out to me. You know, still pretty young. Eight years old, nine years old. But I remember watching it. And I remember watching it with my grandma. And she was from Denmark. And so I was rooting for Brazil. And she's like, well, I'll root for Norway. They're, you know, close to Denmark, you know, Scandinavian country. And I'm like, oh, you're so wrong, Grandma. I was, you know, giving her oh, it's shit. It's Brazil. Wow. It's Brazil. Ronaldo. Yeah, Ronaldo. Yeah. Ronaldo, you know. Was, oh, they don't stand a chance. Yeah. And they ended up losing 2-1 to one to Norway <laughs> in that game. I just, I don't understand. I mean, you look at their lineup, and it's like Ronaldo, Bebeto, Rivaldo, Danielson, Dunga, Leonardo, Roberto Carlos, Cafu, like, there's no way they should have any right to lose that game because I don't recognize anyone except for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and he came off the bench in that game. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, in the game, Brazil scored first in the 78th minute, but Beto got on the end of a cross, heading in the, hitting, uh, getting a header in. And then Norway draw level in the 83rd. Their striker had a nice kind of cutback, curls it around the goalie to tie it up at 1-1. And then Norway got a PK in the 89th. Not sure if it was a foul. It was like two guys going up. Eh, kind of bumped yeah. into each other. A little little body, bodying going on. But that, that's how it ended. I just remember thinking, how did my grandma get this one? Like, <laughs> She was like, huh, Norway won, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh. And I still think to this day, like there's a record where, or something where Brazil has not beat Norway. Like, and I don't know how many years or how many games or whatever it is, but there's some crazy stat like that where Brazil just... I can't imagine they can't play beat Norway. very often. So I'd imagine it goes back a long time, which is crazy. So I would love to see them play again in the next World Cup. I would too, now that Norway... Erling Holland and Martin... We, have, we can know more players now, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they have the best player in the world, arguably. Or two of them. So... Yeah, but yeah, that was a random game. Probably no one else remembers, but I just like I, I said, I don't remember it because I didn't watch it. I just remember talking shit to my grandma saying, oh, Brazil, <laughs> you know, they have Ronaldo. I was, you know, big Ronaldo fanboy. And she just says, oh, well, they're Scandinavian. I'll go for them. <laughs> Damn it, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I do remember I, I my family is all 
or at least my dad's side's all from Yugoslavia. So I remember that was one of the last World Cups they played in as a That was the other thing I remember about that yeah. World Cup is watching Yugoslavia play. Yeah, that was my second team behind Brazil rooting for. So all right. You ready for my number two? And it's an unlikely source. All right, let's hear it. I actually have Tottenham on here. Oh, yeah. Tottenham have been a part of some good games. They have. And probably the best game Tottenham have ever been a part of is in, like you said, 2019. Uh, Champions League semifinal, second leg against Ajax. That was a very good game, yes. Yeah. Uh, Mostly because I remember I turned it on with like 20 minutes left in the game. I'm like, oh, Ajax are going to destroy them. They're up 3-0 aggregate. And then the unthinkable happened. It was just chaos after that. But it was I mean, end to end, man. Yeah, Ajax up one nil after the first leg. Delic and Hakim Ziyech scored in the first half, three nil. But it was a second half hat trick by Lucas Mora <laughs> to level it up. That was his uh, biggest contribution to Tottenham. It really it was, was that game. It was, and the part that lives rent free in my head was essentially him scoring. In the 96th minute with the last kick of the game. Like it was absolute chaos in the box, and all of a sudden he just taps it, like taps it in. You're like, where did that come from? And then absolute pandemonium for Tottenham. And it just it was such a good game, end to end. It was very end to end, oh, yeah. Man. And then I'll be honest with you, those might be my favorite Tottenham jerseys of all time. The navy blue that like faded into the like aquamarine teal color it was fantastic yeah it's like a kind of almost like a dark blue that goes to a light green kind of a thing yeah, doesn't it exactly yeah. since then they've only had hideous jerseys and their home jersey so i i don't know what nike's doing there but they should go back to something like that <laughs> yeah I, I do remember that game we got a lot of ix players that have then left you know, you mentioned Hakeem Ziyech to Licht. Mm-hmm. I remember David Neres in that game. Danny Van de Beek. Mm-hmm. Onana, Frankie, I think, was the goalie Frankie for... Frankie De Jong, I believe, played Yeah, Frankie De Jong. Yeah. I think Andre Onana was the goalkeeper. Yeah. I mean, it was... And Harry Kane wasn't even fit for the game. Which is the craziest thing for me. So, I... As far as Tottenham goes, maybe they are better off without him. It's the last time they were in a meaningful match without him. Maybe. We'll see. They might they might be without him here shortly. I, I don't think Daniel Levy listens to this podcast, but if he does, you know. Collect your maybe. 100 mil and be happy. Yeah. Take your 100 mil. <clears throat> maybe ask for a player in exchange. Bayern Munich have a bunch that they're willing to get rid of, so. Give him Sadio Mane. There you go. There he you wants go. to leave. I, I mean, if I'm Sadio Mane, I don't want to go. But... <laughs> Probably not, no. All right, buddy. What do you got next? All right, so my next one, this one's a local local game for us. It was the MLS Cup final in 2016. Toronto FC against the Seattle Sounders. And, of course, we're being from the Seattle area, our Sounders fans. This was their first MLS Cup appearance, and they won it on PKs, man. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, too. I remember this game very well, and normal time might have been the most boring game I've ever watched in my entire life. (laughs) It was pretty bad. So, I mean, the majority of the game, because this game was in Toronto, so obviously they had their home fans. But not only that, it's Toronto in, what was December. it, December? Yeah. <laughs> this is not warm. That's cold. No, it's frigid. <laughs> and that Toronto team, man, they had some stars on them. G- Sebastian Giovinco, Josie Altador, Michael, Michael Bradley, Bradley yeah. Osorio, Jonathan Osorio. So, I mean, they had a good team. They did. And they dominated that game, peppered Stefan Fry. He was having to make saves. Seattle really couldn't get anything going. It's a zero zero, nil nil, going into extra time. And then that's where, like, honestly, this the iconic moment. That's on t-shirts and lives in 
this, Seattle fans' minds. Yes, everywhere. is that save from Stephen Fry where he's reaching back Ball and going makes to that the top save. Corner, and he almost like gives an extra stretch while midair. And like his somehow, arm just grew somehow. Yeah. Somehow got fingertips to it. I don't know how that happened. But yeah, man, what a save. I mean, it was a cross ball. Josie Alder gets ahead to it. Fry's moving to his right, has to come back to his left. And like you said, just claws it out of that top corner. That save. It was one of the best saves I've ever seen in my entire life. It was fantastic. Yeah. And then, it, like I said, it goes on to PKs. Sounders win it by four. And honestly, that season was a rough season for the Sounders. Like, if you remember, they started terribly. I think at one point they were in last place. Like I think so. The season. And yeah. then it was probably, I think, July, August, sometime during the summer, they went on a tear and just started winning game after game after game. And they somehow made it into MLS Cup. But you also remember that was the season Ziggy Schmidt left the Seattle Sounders. Yeah. The coach who had been there since their inception back in 2000, was it seven or eight? Uh, yeah, somewhere in there. So, I mean, he'd been there a good seven or eight years, nine years, whatever it is. And then the OG, the original sounder coach, Brian, yep, Schmitzer, Brian Schmitzer, took over midway and then turned things around. Yeah. And somehow they pulled it off, man. I mean, it was good to see... Uh, Osvaldo Alonso get a trophy because I think he left not either the next season or not too long after that. Yeah. But they still got some of the players they have now. Nico Lodero, Jordan Morris, Stefan Fry. They're still Christian Roldan. Mm-hmm. Still playing in the Sounders team. Yeah, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, they still had Jimmy Traore in that game. Former that I don't know. Defender. He didn't play if, if he... Yeah. But I think he was still on the squad. I don't know. I'm looking at the lineup now, and he was not on the bench either. But yeah, that's a game. Like you said, it was it was not an entertaining game. But when your home team wins the the trophy, man, that's something you just remember. Which yeah. they have then gone on to beat Toronto again. Yes, they did. Since then, in another MLS Cup final, but. This one was the first. It was the first. And it was a big step for the Sounders, you know, making the playoffs every year and just letting everyone down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. Uh, I don't mean to bring up really bad memories, buddy, but this one lives rent free in my head as a nightmare. 2006. Oh, I know where Champions you're going. League final. Uh. Arsenal and Barcelona. I know. Jens Lehmann sent off in the 18th minute. Uh, so who came beautiful. on? Because Almunia then came on, but then who yeah. came off? Perez. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that game. I'm getting heartburn right now. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. yeah, and then was it Ludwig Juli? For Barcelona, put the ball in the back of the net via penalty, and then for some reason it was a foul outside the box. So yeah, it was they they saw it was outside the yeah. box, and so Ronaldinho took the free kick and missed. Um, yeah, thirty seventh minute, Arsenal scores. Sol Campbell scores a header off of a Thierry Henry free kick. Um. Controversial foul, Carlos Poyo on Emmanuel Abue. I mean, most believe Abue dove uh, to get that foul either way. Arsenal kept the lead until the introduction of one Henrik Larsson. That was his game, man. For all the Ronaldinho, Samuel Eto's, Deco. It was... It yeah. was Henrik Larson at I think at that point he was in his thirties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean Iniesta and Javi were both on the bench. Both kids at this point. And yeah, I mean 
it turned into the Henrik Larson show after that, and he completely dominated Arsenal, assisting both goals, one scored by Samuel Eto and the other one by Giuliano Belletti. And heartbreak for all Arsenal fans because it's their first and only appearance in a Champions League final. But I remember being at my buddy Jonathan's house with his dad, who was from London, huge Arsenal fan. And the amount of cussing at that time, <laughs> I was a junior in high school. And I don't know if I've ever heard that much cussing or at least language that I didn't know what he was saying. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just, I was so mad. It ruined my whole month. It was awful. I do remember that game. Yeah. I, again, I know where I was too. I was sitting in my room. You know, I had a TV that was on the floor. It was, you know, old school, big box TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was sitting right in front of it watching it. Like, you know, I remember the first goal when Sol Campbell scored. I'm just like, you know, jumping, screaming for Running joy. And then uh, that yeah. red card. And it's like, no, but then Ronaldinho misses the free kick. But then, like you said, Henrik Larson came on, man. And it was just like, you know, the happiness just slowly drained and faded. Quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember Arsenal, man, they had a tough route, too. They had to beat Real Madrid in that game or mm -hmm. to get to that game. They had to beat Juve. And then it was uh, Villarreal, a PK save from Jens Lehmann against Juan Ramon Raquelme. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, Barcelona just had Chelsea, Benfica, and AC Milan. So. Some iconic games on that route to the final. I mean, there notably, were, there were notably Real Madrid against Arsenal at the Bernabeu. I mean, Juve at home. That was a good one. And I remember watching Villarreal against Arsenal too. And man, up and down, up and down, up and down. That one was close. That one was <laughs> close. Was. Yeah, it was. One of I do remember when they played down. Juve, Patrick Vieira had left Arsenal. And so he yeah. was playing for Juventus playing for Juve. at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was uh, that was peak Arsenal Champions League right there. Ended in heartbreak. All right, well, we'll move on to my next one then. So this one's a World Cup game. <laughs> <laughs> a World Cup game in 2010 quarterfinal. Ghana against Uruguay. Yeah. So this one is best known for... One player, an iconic player who's gotten himself into lots of trouble over the years. <laughs> Luis Suarez, the iconic handball, swats the ball out of the net. And that ball was going in, and there was no way for him to get to it. And he just like, you know what? Got a better chance saving the PK than me letting this in. <laughs> <laughs> My job, I remember watching that. And I don't, was I watching it with you? I don't remember, but my jaw hit the floor. I didn't see it the first time, like live. Yeah. Like I was like, was, was that a handball? It was on the replay. Yeah, the replay, you can see him. It's quite a hit post. Yeah. And then you just see it like blatantly. It was back. Yeah. But I'll start at the beginning of this game because this was actually a really good it game. Was. It was. It ended 1 1. But the first goal scored by Sully Montari, who you might remember. A banger, too. And he was known for those. Has a shot from the deep. The deep. Go in. He beat uh, Musilera. I think it was, it was, is it Fernando Musilera? I think so. And yeah, it was just a banger. And then probably the player of that World Cup, Diego Forlan. It was that weird South Africa ball. That had all, like none of the players could figure out for some Jubilani. reason. Jubilani. Except yeah. for Diego Forlea. Except for Diego <laughs> <laughs> And he puts in a banger free kick, too, in the 55th. It was like off to the side, man, because that ball just moved everywhere. Everywhere. I remember playing with that thing, and, man, it was that fun to shoot. You never knew where it was going. No, you didn't. It into this whole thing, your goal, you're like going this way, then it starts going the other way. You're like, oh, shit. Or it looks like it's going to go down, and then it goes up. Yep. You can never tell. Or the opposite. It looks like it's yeah. going. And then it goes. Yep, just drops. 
But yeah, I mean, honestly, I think the reason that game is most memorable, like I said, because of the Luis Suarez antics. Yeah. It was 1-1 the- going into that extra time. He bats that ball away in extra time. Asamo Gian steps up to take that penalty and misses. He Blazes missed it, man. Blazes it. Hits the crossbar. And then I remember the cameras cutting to Luis Suarez in the tunnel and he starts celebrating. And- yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then it went to PKs, and yeah, that's where uh, Uruguay won it, 4-2 on PKs. Fernando Musilera, he came up with uh, two saves in that shootout. And just, yeah, it's, it almost, for me, really started the saga of the Luis Suarez antics. You know, then obviously in the next World Cup, he went on to bite Chiellini. He's yeah. bit another player, I think, when he played for Ajax, and then he bit Ivanovic from Chelsea. Yeah. He had his whole feud with Patrice Evra. I remember that one. Just and Luis Suarez, man. The, He's always in the, the spotlight. Public spats of racism. Yeah. Yeah, with Patrice Evra. Yeah. Fantastic striker, though, I will say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of the Spence best. From his antics. One of the best. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, My next one, we're going to go back to Arsenal because you got to have one that's kind of good with the the bad. Uh, Arsenal, Liverpool, April 21st, 2009. You might remember this iconic celebration. Yeah. Andre Arshavin with four goals ended 4-4, and this game was absolutely nuts. I the defending in this game, I just have to say before we get into it, was absolutely terrible. I mean, the first goal Andre Chauvin scores in the 39th minute, like the defender heads it right to Arshavin and then he volleys it in. Giving yeah, it was the ball poor away clearance. First at the top of his 18 yard box. Poor clearance. Uh and then Arsenal let in one in the 49th minute after the ball is given away to Dirk Kaut, who by Bakari Sanya, who goes to clear the ball out of midair and kicks it to the side, just right to him. Wide open, crosses Another it in. Poor clearance. Fernando Torres heads it in the net. I will uh, say this was prime Fernando Torres during the, this was. time. Uh, and then uh, one Yossi Benayoun, who uh, let's not forget, had one of the worst loan stints at a club ever. And it was Ar- to Arsenal from Chelsea. I was going to say, didn't he play for Chelsea? He played for mm-hmm. Liverpool, Chelsea, and Arsenal, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Israeli, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Uh, and this one was weird because Dirk Kaut put in a cross, and it looked like Ben Ayun got tripped, and while falling down, hits the ball with his head, and then gets run into by the other defender, like almost knocking him out, and then the ball goes over the line before Almunia can get there. I don't know how it went in, but it did. It didn't look like because you and I were watching no. that that goal. It's like, what did that cross the yeah. line? Yeah, it was uh, a close. Not one. to mention a prime Howard Webb refereeing this game. You recognize he's, that he's now in charge pretty. of the uh, referees. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully he does better this year than last year. Uh, Andre Arshavin with the his second in the sixty second minute. Some terrible defending as well. Ball essentially comes to a defender. He heads it down. Ben Ayun doesn't go to the ball. Arshavin steals it, rifles it into the far corner. That one was was that his beautiful finish? Yes, that goes far across the goalie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and then he scores again in the seventieth minute. Fabio Aurelio looking at the ground while making a touch. Arshavin is just literally standing right there. And his touch goes right to his foot, and he puts it in the net. So, again, terrible defending. And then uh, Fernando Torres, of course, gets the next one, which is a wonderful goal, beating three Arsenal defenders, putting it in the bottom corner. And then the fourth, where the commentator, this is really what I remember the most, was you used to hear the commentator go, Four as Andre Arshavin's like <laughs> after a wonderful counterattack between him and Theo Walcott 
And then in true Arsenal fashion, they give up a goal in the 93rd minute to UFC Ben Ayun. His ball lobbed up, headed back across the goal, and he's there to finish it. And I remember it because, well, that started the whole saga of Arsenal being Arsenal. What they're known for now is giving up leads late in games and crumbling under pressure. So <laughs> that's why it lives rent free in my head, my friend. <laughs> for not a good reason. Yeah. Nightmares. That was a wild game, though. But yeah, I think the thing I remember most from that game is the Arshav in celebration. Just that kind of that dumbfounded look on his face holding up the four. Just, what? I can't believe I scored four goals. At Anfield, what? Yeah. And a hideous yellow jersey <laughs> with red writing. They weren't, they weren't pretty to me. No, I did not like those jerseys. They sure were comfortable to wear, but man, were they hideous. So. All right, well, moving on to my last one. And it is also an Arsenal game. This but one's it's a for happy one. it's this a one's happy a happy one. one. Oh, happy, kind of sad. It's a little bit of both. So this was during the Invincible when they won their their last title. So this was twenty years ago. They played Leeds at Highbury. So this was April fifteenth, two thousand four, in the Premier League. It was Arsenal versus Leeds at Highbury. Arsenal went on to win five nil. Goals by Pires, and then four goals from Thierry Henry. All hail the king. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, but yeah, like I said, it was their invincible season. They won the league. You know, that season, man, there was just something special. Prime Henry at Ivory. You know, Prime Pires, he had the Bergkamp, Unbergs. It was just nothing better than uh, for an Arsenal fan during that time. It was the best, and to be honest with you, in some ways, Arsenal fans are just like Dallas Cowboy fans. You remember the Invincibles? <laughs> yeah. Like, best team ever? Yeah. Yeah. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> it was. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> but the reason this game lives rent-free in my head, so Pira scored the first goal, and then it was just the Henri show. Henri, you know, doing what he does, finishing it. He got a PK in there that he scored. Um, but this was actually the last game I watched before my grandfather passed away. And so he had come over, we had watched that game, and it was, you know, a few days later was when he had a heart attack. Ended up passing away from it. But that was the last game we got to watch together. And I just remember, like, smiling ear to ear, obviously, watching my favorite player put in four goals, watching my favorite team just thump another team, them going on, you know, to win the premier league. So it was just a the great memory for me and something I hold special. Yeah. So it just goes to show, you know, some of the games, they don't have to be the best games or the most memorable, but sometimes they can just be with someone who you watched it with that can make it special. And that's the joy of football, right? Like that's why we watch it is for those moments. So that is a very good one and very touching. I know you've told me that story many times, so. Yep. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. I had to not tear up myself <laughs> on that one. Uh, okay. Happier note, Targo. I know this one lives rent free in your head as well. 2002 World Cup final, Korea, Japan, not to mention this was the World Cup with the best commercials. All right. <laughs> right. Jogo Bonito. Jogo Bonito. <laughs> the, the cage, still to date, probably my favorite commercials ever. Was this the Ever. airport one where at the Brazil was, national team in the airport? No, no, it was the the ship where they had the cage matches. Oh where yeah, Cantona okay. Was dropping the chrome soccer ball. Yeah, those ones. I'll remember those for the rest of my life. Uh, but let's just say it was the juggernaut Germany against and the world's best defense and goalkeeper against the four R's, man. Ronaldo, Rivaldo. Roberto Carlos, and a young Ronaldinho. A young Ronaldinho. Joga Benito. Man, they were so fun to watch. So fun. And then you had Germany, who were just a juggernaut and, like, barely allowed any goals. I think they had allowed, like, one goal the whole tournament going into the game. They had the best defense in that tournament, yeah. yeah. And it turned into 
the juggernaut or David versus Goliath, essentially, which team was going to get. I would say it was more like a Goliath versus Goliath, but (laughs) yeah, I guess, you know, immovable object against the unstoppable force. And it was Ronaldo who was the unstoppable force brightest in this game. I mean, I remember the defensive gaff, I guess you could say, uh, by, Germany's defense passing the ball back to Oliver Kahn and are getting, and he was passing it back or Revolta got, got the ball, caught on the shot. balls. I think, wasn't it? Yeah. And then Oliver Kahn like fumbled the ball and Ronaldo was right there to just take it around him and tap it in. And I just remember the announcers being, Oh, the ball is wet. Oliver Kahn should have stopped it, but because it was wet, it got out of his hands. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, And then, just to put it out of doubt, it was El Phenomeno with the second one, classic Ronaldo. Cementing his best, or cementing his name as the best player in the world. Just classic. I just just remember how good Ronaldo was in that final. It was a thing of beauty. Yeah, and it was like a, almost a relief for him because they had struggled in the 98 World Cup against yeah. France. They lost that mm-hmm. final. You know, and even the road to this one, I remember, I guess here's another game that kind of lives rent-free in my head, but it was when they played England and Ronaldinho scored off that free kick against David Seaman. Mm-hmm. And then I remember Rivaldo, he had his antics in that World Cup too where someone kicked a ball at him and it hit his leg and he's holding his face. <laughs> But yeah, that that Brazil team was whew, something else. Yeah, that, and I mean, yeah, first World it, Cup it, in Asia too. Yeah, yeah, best commercials, probably in my mind, the best World Cup of all time. I might be biased, and we had this on a previous podcast, ranked the best World Cups. It was up there. It's uh, a it's a good one, man. I, I remember where I was at watching that final. I was at a buddy's house who lived in Eatonville. I made them all get up early to watch the World Cup final. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember it's it's probably the last. It was a lot, one of the last games that I remember. Uh, a buddy of mine was over from England. Who the reason why it lives rent free in my head is he's the one that got me into Arsenal. So he was there. He was our trainer at the time. And him and I woke up early and watched it. And I remember I was going for Brazil and he was going for Germany. And he was just cussing at the TV the whole time. And <laughs> I was just dancing around like Ronaldo does. The classic celebration with one finger pointing down. Yeah, the one. Up. The haircut. The haircut. The haircut. How do you forget that? Yeah. Yeah, you can't. Pretty much it's a haircut with just bangs. <laughs> the rest is bald. Like, what was he thinking? I don't I have know. no idea, man. But it is classic now. Um, I still have the jersey. I won't hang it up because it's fallen apart. <laughs> the authentic one that Ronaldo, the same one that he wore. Numbers are all falling off because it's so old. But, God, so good. It's one of the joys of my life. So. And then we got one more for you guys, a bonus one, because this we couldn't agree which one was going to take it. And this <laughs> in our minds is the best game we've ever watched, at least in my mind. It is know. up there. Yeah, it is definitely up there. It was that that night in Istanbul. AC Milan and Liverpool 2005 Champions League final. Oh, what a game it was, especially because it was completely unbiased and I, I didn't care who won. And nope. <laughs> it did not disappoint. I mean, no, Maldini it did not. scored in the first minute off a wonderful Pirlo free kick. Hernan Crespo scored two goals before the half, make it 3 0 to AC Milan. And then the second half was the Liverpool show. Coming back from 3-0 down, man. Three goals in seven minutes. It was a wild game, man. It was wild. 
And my the part I remember the most about this game was in the penalty kick shootout. Jersey Dudek with his spaghetti legs dancing all <laughs> around. Yeah, wiggling. I don't know what yeah. else you call it. Yeah, and then you know I was in high school and we would do that in practice afterwards to just defending. You're like, <laughs> what on earth are you doing? And then all of a sudden the defender would have the ball, and you're like, what? Yeah. Saves Perlo's penalty kick. Saves Shevchenko's penalty kick. Diving the wrong way, putting a glove up back behind him to stop Shevchenko's penalty. Honestly, oh. the thing I remember most about that game is the first half. What the the Milan goals. The second half, once the comeback started, I was just more in shock. Like, what? <laughs> I, I, it was too shocking. My brain blocked it out. And then I do remember, so on, for that game, I had to stay home. I stayed home sick from school. I told my mom I was sick so I could watch this game. And then I... I yeah, my that's dog, back, Was that back when they were on Wednesday nights? The Champions League finals? I think so. It was, <laughs> it was during the week because I had school that day. <laughs> And so I had to stay home from school and I have, this is going to be embarrassing, but I had a water bed back then. Cause I remember, I remember had a water bed back then <laughs> and watching this game, my dog popped it. No. And so I'm sitting there with like a finger in the water bed, trying to stop it from leaking and trying to watch this game. So yeah, that is, that game has a lot of memories, man. I had to like get a hose and like siphon the water out my window. <laughs> it's propping two stories <laughs> down into the backyard. And <sighs> yeah, that game had a whole, whole bunch of memories. So that's, that also might be why I don't remember the second yeah, half as much. Sense. That would make sense. Holy crap. But then I remember the celebrations and the shootout. <laughs> Steven Gerrard yeah. lifting that champions league yeah. trophy, doing the shaking it back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> very aggressively too yeah yeah so but those are the games that live rent free in our heads you guys you have to let us know which games live rent free in yours you know there's there's some other iconic ones out there make sure you're on facebook group yep comment on the post let us know there's plenty of manchester united man city games i know that are fantastic other world cup games but yeah, let us know on our Facebook. Don't forget to also follow us on our Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Check out the Red Bubble. Get the merch. I'm Targo. This is Red Beard. We love you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.